Hello everyone, welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I wanted to create a place where people can go to to get inspired, get motivated, or find some clarity and get tools to create a radically loved life. I will do my best to provide information on a variety of subjects, including yoga, holistic health, life coaching, spirituality, meditation, and overall mindful living. Each episode will bring you some of the world's best spiritual leaders, entrepreneurs, yoga teachers, coaches, along with some of my closest friends, and we will talk about their life experiences and journeys to create something more out of their lives and how they continue to grow to make that happen. Thanks for listening. Yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Radically Loved Radio. I am so beyond excited for our guest today. Probably, and I can say this, and I apologize for my last 300 guests plus, <laughs> but I am, I think this is literally going to be my favorite episode of all time because our guest today, I don't even think she needs an introduction. Um, she is an incredibly talented singer, actress, and the new best selling author of. Finding Your Harmony. We have Ali Brooke in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you are so sweet. Girl, the pressure's on for me. I better make sure it's your best interview ever. You know, and, and here's what we were talking about just before we started. I read your book cover to cover and I, it's, it's for me because I, there's so many similarities that I was able to relate to in your journey and your experience, you know, having uh, also grown up in a Mexican American household. Um, I'm first gen, so my parents, you know, immigrated from Mexico. Oh and yes, and so, you know, reading the be- even just the beginning of the story, I was like in tears just with the dedication for your mom and everything that you talk about. I mean, so much of what this book is about is about resilience and it's about faith and it's about staying the course. So thank you so much for being here. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. And the fact that you resonated to my book and you valued you know just my family and you understand being a mexican-american um and just everything that you said thank you so much it's so true i've had to persevere my my whole life and to hold on to my faith when things were you know incredible and i was feeling this victory and these victorious moments but also when um things were very hard and and when the world try to strip me of who I was and and, and any sort of light that I had in me. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes. I mean, even just in the beginning, well, first of all, I've been a fan of you and for a while. And so it's so interesting because I, the things that I didn't know, you know, obviously like I'm in the world of like yoga and meditation, you know, so I don't really keep up with too many, you know, uh, media or pop topics or anything like that, you know, but I just know that you're (laughs) (laughs) right. I just know that your voice and your music really resonated with me because I was always able to just feel how much soul there was there. And I'm like, I can literally get emotional just thinking about it because, and in this, in your book, you talk about how Selena was and is your number one idol, Selena Quintanilla. Yes. And when I first heard you and saw you, those were the vibes that I got. I said, man, this girl really reminds me of Selena. So, me going yeah. you. That, that means the whole world to me because she's my hero and I've been inspired by her since I was a young girl in diapers, literally in diapers, <laughs> singing her song. <laughs> and at such a young age, just looking at her and saying that, wow, I want to be like her, or, you know, someone like me, looks like me, you know, Mexican American woman. Yeah. Oh, and reach her dreams and impact so many people. It's just incredible. Yeah. And- yes. You have such a warrior spirit. 
I mean, from, you know, uh, the moment of your birth <laughs> and being a being a pre- premature baby and growing up always having that sort of tenacity and that warrior spirit, that spont- spontaneity. Um, to me, on our journey and in our life journey, you know, one of the things that I always talk about and I think about is the things that fuel us to get to a place of dreaming big, which is a lot of, again, what you write about. Um, for you, that that fueling of your dream is stemmed from your faith and your belief that uh, you're mm-hmm. being cared for, that you're being radically loved, as I like to say, that you're yeah. being that you're being cared for. Um, what is the what is the thing for you? Even in writing your story, that still has left the biggest impression from your journey when you were a young girl? Ooh, I think um, that moment in Oakwood Apartments with my mom, (laughs) when I felt so out of place, Mm. you know, being from San Antonio to Los Angeles, 12 years old, just not feeling good enough, not feeling pretty enough, not feeling cool enough. I just had this moment where I was alone, you know, with my with my mom trying to make a dream happen. It was much harder than I thought. And, you know, it was very hard on my family. And not having friends yet at that point and looking like an outsider, feeling like an outsider, seeing all the cool kids, you know, mm. with their friends. And I clearly wasn't part of that just having that moment of of crying in that apartment. I'll never forget that single story, whatever it's called, the one room apartment, you know, just crying my eyes out with my mom and saying, mom, I'll never be good enough. I'll never be pretty enough. I'll never be cool enough. And her crying with me and just um, feeling that and then out of that was a very, very hard day. And like I say in my book, um, it was one of my mom's hardest days as a parent. But out of that, after that, that hard night, um, Beauty for Ashes, the next day, I wrote my very first song called Be You. And like a love letter to myself, encouraging myself to be myself, to not change to not become anyone else. Mm. And that was such a moment that still impacts me to this day. And those words that that 12 year old wrote, don't you dare turn into someone else. You Mm. know that that's not you. Do you really want to be like that? So go ahead and be yourself. If they don't like you, surely someone else else will. So go ahead. you. Those words resonate with me today. (laughs) They resonated with me. I mean, like you went straight to the story that had me in tears because I've, I've felt that I've gone through that myself. And look, even growing up in, I grew up in LA, like this is part of, you know, my growing up in, in this world. Granted, I wasn't in the entertainment industry, but I, you know, had moments, you know, as a child, when you're young and you grow up in LA, it's like, everybody wants to go to the auditions and do the things. And I remember there was one audition that my mom, oh, I'm 10 years older than you, by the way, we're both summer babies. I'm 83, you're 93. So you literally look my age. That's so crazy. It's all the yoga and meditation and the prayer and the prayer. Oh my God, please keep, keep me healthy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but so my mom ended up taking my sister and I to go be, um, they were auditioning for extras for the Power Rangers. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Iconic. I mean, wow. Right. But, but right. Was so, and when I got there, when we got there, uh, it was at in universal, uh, studios. And I remember just feeling so out of place because I'm in this line of all these kids and everybody's got it. When you're talking about the clothes and what people were wearing and like, I had these dirty sneakers and I wasn't, you know, I had my hair up, but I just, in that instant, like I didn't think that I was different from anybody else until all of a sudden I was lined up in front of people that were judging me that, 
that point out that, that how different you are. Right. So yeah, I think that was such a pivotal moment in, in your story, right. Where you, you're kind of coming to this realization that I don't look like everybody else here. I don't have what they have, even though, you know, your parents did their best and your mom's like, you know, uh, styling you from, you know, Marshall's and like all the things, you know, I was just like, girl, this is my life. Amazing. Um, but I really think that, you know, in those moments, especially for you having such awareness and writing that song right after having that, that I would say breaking point, how many girls yeah. out there and, and boys too have that moment where they just stop. That's the end of their dream. Yes. And that's, you know, in that moment you can feel so alone and you can feel so discouraged and it really does break your heart because you know as a young child you, you should just be enjoying your life enjoying being a kid you know and and not feeling all this insecurity and all this these these feelings of oh my gosh I'm not good enough or my clothes don't look like their clothes or my teeth are crooked and I'm not pretty because they have perfect teeth you know um but in that that that's why this book is so important to me is it's one of the most important things to me because mm. this is my chance to show all those little girls and little boys who feel that way who felt that way that you can get through those hard nights that you're not alone that it's normal to feel that way no matter who you are no matter where you come from and out of out of your pain can come something beautiful like a song it doesn't even have to be a song it could be a poem it could be um a realization with within yourself it could be um inspiration for whatever you choose for it to be and you can learn from those moments and pick yourself back up and move forward in life and and choose to move forward choose to not stay there that's my hope, you know, through this book and those lessons like that is to take what I learned. I know I'm, I'm still so young, but just to take what I learned and, and, and give this advice to these, these kids who need it, especially now more than ever. That's my wish is, is for yeah. them to know that there is hope and you're not alone and it's normal to feel all these things. But again, you can come out of it stronger. Yes. Oh, I love that so much. It's so true. There was another pivotal moment, I think, when when you turn eight when you're you turned 18 and you're again faced with this crossroads. It's like, okay, I'm here now. Am I gonna continue this path? Nothing's happened yet. And um I think a lot of us can relate to those crossroads because it ha I mean I'm 37 I mean it still happens to me now where you're working really hard for something and yes. you know and and maybe you're not seeing the fruits of your efforts yet so what what do you have to say for the people out there who have all these dreams and aspirations especially now like it's 2020 we're going through a lot right now. <laughs> and by the way it, it, was, it was so refreshing to just read your story during this time because I felt like it really is true to what we're going through this yeah. adversity that we're feeling you know the the things that we're having to overcome um the people listening right now that are at a crossroads with their career they've lost their job or they're feeling like their their career has been on a standstill because of what's going on and they're losing hope what what would you say to them oh man well I can certainly relate as you know um, because I have had many of those moments, you know, just moments of rejection, moments of um, all the doors closing and there was not another one to go through that I thought and um, moments where I felt like I'm hopeless, you know, I write about being on the floor crying and getting mad at God and being like, why did you allow this to happen? Or why is this not happening? Or, oh my gosh, I'm, I feel like <laughs> one of the themes in my book is almost, things almost happen, things yes. almost come together. And that's even more devastating because you're so close. And then bam, something sweeps you under your rug. What I've learned in my life, in my short little life is that 
even though we have those moments and we feel in such despair, in such hopelessness, we're helpless. It feels like nothing or no one can help us. I can't believe that I got through everything that happened to me in my life. Everything from career stuff to even, you know, stuff in my family. I talk about my uncle, how he, he, he was diagnosed with cancer and that just wrecked us as a family. And it was right while, right while I was, um, you know, at the height of, of beginning my solo career last year. And, and it was so much to balance, you know, that grief and that anger and that, that, that confusion, but he got healed from it. That was a miracle that I saw. And then even my grandpa, before he passed away, I had never thought that my grandpa and my mom would ever reconcile. I had made peace with, that's just not gonna happen in this lifetime. And, but then, and it's so beautiful that that happened. And it, um, it leaves you changed. It really does. It leaves you changed in this final, final days. That happened, and I'm so happy to share his story. I'm so honored. Um, but anyways, just just believing and persevering and not giving up. That's what I would say to someone who's mm. feeling hopeless and lost right now is please don't give up. I know it's hard. I know it seems like you'll never see the light again, and you don't know how you're going to overcome this time. But you will, I promise you you will, you are so much stronger than you think. And the best is yet to come. Mm, I love that so much. You know, one of the things that I, I did admire so much about your family unit, your organism is how uh, united and how connected everybody was. And to me, that's one of the things that I love about Hispanic and Latin cultures is that, you know, uh, I think you said it's, uh, family, faith, food, yep. and love, right? Yep. And well, so, awesome. you know it so well. It's so, <laughs> it's so, it's so amazing for me. Yeah, it's I so mean, cool. to me, it, it, well, again, we we were kind of talking about this before, but it it kind of gets gets under my skin when when people interview people when they're on a circuit and they haven't read their story I'm like you're just gonna ask the questions that everybody else is asking and and to me that's just like I I just don't it's like a waste of somebody's time it's like I think it's important whenever because it's such a big deal to write a book I'm in the middle of writing a book myself right now oh my gosh congratulations Thank girl you. oh I know Girl, I know all the struggles. I, I know, mean, I know all the the emotions. Girl, good. don't give up. I almost did. Don't give up. Okay. I'm literally seriously, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep it together, not get emotional right now. But literally, I'm I'm in this process, and I'm just like, it's really hard, you know, yep. Yep. to to share your story, yes. and the fact that. I'm going through that and then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take a break. Mm -hmm. And then your book arrives and I'm like, oh, I'm going to read. This looks good. I'm going to read this. I love her. I love her music. And that it just opened me up and I was like, okay, oh I can do, God. I can do this. You know, praise the Lord. Seriously. I, <laughs> yes, you can. I know that feeling. I mean it. I many nights called my parents I had to do overnights you know being like 12 in the afternoon to like four in the morning just exhausted grueling agonizing um and just digging deep in and reliving those memories it's 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 incredible it's an incredible amount to take on as yeah. a human and a woman so don't be discouraged keep on going girl it's amazing what you can do under pressure and <laughs> really push yourself I swear I, I had those moments I called my manager I called my parents like mom and dad I can't do this I like I quit yeah uh, like, mama no oh I thought, take a minute take a beat take a few hours but you got a job to do and you've got you made a promise and you've got it and I, I signed a you, contract I a contract <laughs> and and plus beyond that just knowing within yourself yeah just important 
you can't yeah. live without knowing that this well right and so okay so knowing that before I deviated sorry I'm like here's uh Allie's giving me mindfulness tips now <laughs> we've reversed roles <laughs> I know the struggle right and it's really like you can do it it seems impossible. Trust me. Again, I know the feeling of just being like, oh my God, I want to quit. Go home. Yes. A word again. And again, you'll know. Like, yeah. You'll know if you, need to, if you do need to wait. You'll know if you do need to push yeah. back. I actually push back a lot in my book. <laughs> There's like four different dates. <laughs> I finally came out. <laughs> but um, anyways, girl. But so... So going back to what I was saying, when, because I know how much it takes to create something like this, I'm a person, if if I'm going to have somebody on the show, if I'm going to bring them to, to our audience and, and all of you listening, you know, I love you and I'm, I'm going to be completely honest and, and upfront with everybody. Like I, I know how much work it is to complete a, a a work like this. And so I want to honor that time, you know, so I, I think that you know, for the podcasts out there, the podcasters out there who are interviewing people, like read the, read their book. Like, don't just have them on because you think whatever you think it's popular. They're doing the circuit, like actually read, this is a person and this is a story. Like it's such an important thing for us to actually give the time to, uh, change our perspective and to find how we are more alike than how we are not. You know, I think that's a big thing that we're going through right now, right, is a lot of our differences are um, not being, are are sort of being used against us, right? We're looking to see how different we are as opposed to how alike we are and how our stories are so similar. Right. You said it perfectly. And I appreciate you saying that. Again, I appreciate you reading my book because it's like, (laughs) I didn't do all this for nothing. (laughs) And it's so, I mean, it's the most personal thing, Mm -hmm. the most just soul bearing thing you can really do um is a book because it's all in there you know and the fact that you have taken the time and you've respected and you really you've read it and you um you've loved it and cared for it it just means more than words really it does so thank you for oh of course uh, all the all the all the tears all the blood all the yeah pain all the beauty you know yeah. it's, it's worth it because you know what oh my god zoom dear zoom we're, we're gonna do this in person the next time just saying <laughs> yes. um, so we you know in the beginning um I was going back to how things always start that that's how I like to process any issues or when I'm struggling with something I'm like okay how why am I here right and I look at that with other people and their own stories and you know I'm I'm a yoga teacher and I teach meditation and I'm I work with a lot of people and I always say okay what are your roots where are you coming from let's find out like what your what what's your why what is your reason for and for you, you know, I just kept going back and following, falling into the cocoon of your incredible parents, you know, and the sacrifice that they made. And, and again, you writing about it and how in hi- hindsight, it's always twenty twenty, right? When you're a young kid, you don't really realize, you, you realize it and you know your parents love you, but you don't realize the level of sacrifice, oh you gosh. know, until you look back. And so that to me is, is so reassuring, you know, like I had incredible parents as well. My dad, um, is still a mariachi singer and yes. <laughs> and, well, that is like, that is such a part of me. That's like one of the last things, okay, not to get super deep, but one of the last things I want to hear when I, you know, when I'm supposed to go to heaven yeah. <laughs> is, body up like oh it's just right there in the heart that's my grandma's favorite you know yeah. my, my parents favorite my aunt's favorite my favorite oh yeah please. and I love the way that the way that you describe uh the the music that you grew up with you know just really reminded me of that but also my dad had a super talented I mean extremely talented still is to this day um 
so passionate, so, so much heart, you know, and he really sings his soul Mm. and he gave up his dream to raise his family, you know? Mm. And to me, it's just like, as a grown up, I would always think, God, dad, like, why did you, why did you, why didn't you just go for your dream? Like, why didn't you? And he would say, you know, because I wanted to be with you guys. Like I wanted to be present in your guys' life. And to me, I think like, you know, you should have had a career instead of being with us. But, but in a way, you know, what he, what he's saying is that I gave up my dream so that you guys could have yours, you know? Uh, Girl, you're going to make me cry. Yes, that is, um, that's parents for you. (laughs) And that's, uh, uh, I just, that hits me right here because my parents are the same, you know, I write about how they gave up their dream home yeah. property for me. That's their dream home. They worked their whole lives. They they got out of hard times and, you know, they, they were raised, you know, poor. And they did that. They had the chance to have it all. But they did that to support me and my dream. And that's something that is priceless and the most beautiful type of love and sacrifice and it's just it goes beyond words and that's why this book is so important to me because for the first time I get to tell their story Mm -hmm. and shine a light on how incredible they are because they deserve the world and god bless your dad because I know that's not an easy it's not an easy road that's not an easy decision but parents do it and they they say that they'll do it again because they love us so much, such a deep love that goes beyond comprehension. I'm curious, um, what would your what would your dad and your mom say about your success today? Oh my gosh, they they are overjoyed, over the moon, beyond thankful beyond proud they uh I just actually talked to my dad earlier and (laughs) my parents we talk every single day um and they're they just cannot believe what has come to pass you know because it's not about me it's not like oh I get to be on that that stage and it's just me me me. no like I get to be on that stage of course for myself and my dreams and what I've you know done my whole life and wanted my whole life but for them like it's not a me it's a we in every victory, in every, um, in every triumph, we get to celebrate it together. And that's honoring my parents and what they did and my brother. Um, it's unbelievable. They're so proud and so happy to finally see me find my harmony. You know, as as easy as it is, I had to say it. (laughs) (laughs) So, just so unbelievably happy and just thankful because we have been through hell and back yeah few few years and when you finally get to a place where you see the light and it's 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 shining on you you feel that warmth out of being in in dark and in cold for so long it's phenomenal and I owe it all to them I owe everything to my parents oh my god that's like so (laughs) so I want to have a daughter just like you. <laughs> I want to have a daughter. She's going to be just like you. If not, then. You're so sweet. Maybe Girl, I'll just. Girl, a lot better than me because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm nothing. No, so. you're, you're amazing. So let's go. Uh, let's, let's just talk about this, this process that um, just to give the listeners back home uh, fun to do. Because in the, in the story, I think uh, you talk about how um if you if you don't if you don't have the help or the support that you need go help somebody or be the support for somebody else yes right that yes that is so important you know a lot of us are trying to find our community you know our people Mm -hmm. um those who will empower us and uplift us and sometimes um it doesn't come so easy i i literally have just, I mean, I've always had the most amazing friends back at home in San Antonio, not including them as far as, you know, in, in LA and, you know, 
kind of figuring it all out. I've only recently found <laughs> my group of people and, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful give and take and being able to help someone and encourage someone else. Sometimes in those moments, you find these beautiful bonds and friendships and you begin to build your community. It's hard finding friends. <laughs> it's hard, you know, and I've, I've learned that the hard way, you know, and I've had yeah. to learn some lessons and not to sometimes be so open at first or to be so trusting because yeah. people don't always have the, the best, best intentions. Mm -hmm. But what I figured out is that, um, you know, when you're there for other people, beautiful things can happen. And that could lead to such a beautiful road of, of friendships and, and relationships. Um, and so encouraging people to be kind to one another, to be loving, to be caring, to be thoughtful, to be intentional with your interactions with people. I, I swear that could change lives and change the world. Um, so that's what I love to share with my readers, you know, is that whether you have a wonderful community or you're just finding it, always being there to help people is something that's so amazing and could really help you find your path. Oh, that's so such great advice, especially for a lot of people that have been isolated this year because of, you know, what's been going on with, with coronavirus. People have been isolated maybe from their friends or from their opportunity to go out and meet new people. I mean, I know a, a handful of people here in LA that just moved to LA and then <laughs> coronavirus <laughs> stuff is all shut down and like nothing to do. Sucks. Yeah. So, and for you, like, you know, the book is out, you're, you know, you're on this, this circuit promoting your book, talking about, you know, your, your process, your story, your life. Um, what has this year been like for you and how have you um, overcome whatever adversity you've gone through? Mm. This year has been dynamic to say the least. So I started off it being incredible. And I read about it in my book about, you know, starting off the new, the new year's Rose Bowl parade. Remember that, you know, just new year's when we were all excited and <laughs> ringing in the year. Um, and so I was doing that and I was doing a bunch of other things. And then I did, uh, I was, uh, preparing for my first ever headlining solo tour that I worked my whole life for that. I just, man, one of my biggest dreams in life to finally come true after over 15 years of, of pursuing a, a dream, a solo dream. Um, and I had four dates and it was going incredible. And I was just on this beautiful trajectory in my career for the first time. And it was just sensational. And then sadly, you know, Corona hit the world, this pandemic, and it changed so many people's lives. And it, it definitely impacted mine, you know, just starting out again, that almost starting <laughs> out and four days in, I had like so many more gosh dates and, and cities to go to yeah. all shut down. And it's like, pause, you know, like, no, you, you have to go home it was awful. I was so devastated. I remember crying that morning on the bus, crying before I met my fans uh, for my last show and then just crying for a long time, actually, after, um, I went back to LA, but I got through that, you know, I, I somehow, you know, picked my, myself up, you know, I had, I had faith, you know, that one day I'll be back on that stage and those things will resume again. And it's been a lot of ups and downs, you know, feeling lonely, feeling scared, feeling nervous, feeling anxiety, um, kind of confronted with a lot of issues that I've been putting off for several years. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it was, a blessing to be able to have rest during this time for once and be with my cats. Yes. <laughs> and be able to catch up with old friends and to be able to have time to uh, nurture so many relationships and friendships, friendships, and then also my creativity. And so after getting through that funk and, you know, still doing, still being up and down, it's not easy. Um, I've been able to create so much more music. I was able to create a music video and I'm actually in Atlanta shooting my very first film. So I'm definitely taking the blessings. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on, hold on, wait for it, wait for it. 
Everybody, thank you. <laughs> I am trying to take the blessings and I mean, definitely just soaking that all in and, and being thankful, being so thankful. What matters the most is family and they're all healthy, praise God and safe. And then, you know, just taking these, these blessings and taking them in is, is everything. Gratitude's everything during this time. So yes. it's been a- well, and I, one of the last things that I want to ask you about, and I literally can talk to you for hours and I haven't oh, asked you any other questions you. that I had thank prepared. <laughs> That's the beauty of this. And you are just making me feel so loved and cared for and, God, and are. special. And thank you so much and comfortable and safe. You okay. are amazing, girl. And you I just are amazing. You. I literally could talk to you for like five hours. <laughs> I know. That's so great. Okay. But I want to be respectful of your time and you're shooting a movie. So let's, uh, let's, you know, let's be respectful of that. Um, one of the last things that I wanted to ask you about has to do with your, um, unwavering faith and, and throughout the book, it's, it's such a beautiful, uh, display of commitment you know, and, and I, I really admire that. And I, I'm so inspired by that because when we get to this place and this is for everybody, you know, whatever, um, your spiritual path looks like, whatever your belief is. Um, I think it's important for us to lean into, uh, that, that place, that, that energy, that spirit, that's going to get you into a state of wholeness. And in the book, as you, you talk about God, you talk about your faith, it's like, oh, wow, this is falling apart. Oh, right. But now God has a plan. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, right. Now this is happening. What do I do? Oh, right. God yeah. has a plan, you know? So, you know, for the people that are listening, that are maybe feeling like that moment you felt like when you were on the floor crying, asking WTF. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, out loud, the whole thing. <laughs> um, what do you have to say to the people listening who are maybe struggling right now because they've seen a lot of the negative stuff go on um, in the media, in their homes, maybe in their personal life? Yeah, man, I would say, just like you said, is that to hold on tight is to have faith. That is what has carried me through my entire life you know, dealing with pretty much everything you can imagine. I even left some stuff out of the book, um, some really awful things that that happened to me. Um, gosh, I know what that feels like when you're heartbroken and you, you just feel so alone. You just, you almost don't feel like real. You feel numb, you feel cold and you feel isolated. Just know, just hold on tight. God has a plan for you in your life. And sometimes we have to endure the storm. We have to endure the desert. But many times God will just take care of you and he will get you out of that place. And knowing that you have so much strength inside of yourself, sometimes we need to be tested. You know, like a muscle, if you want to grow, you have to have that that pain. And, And there's so much to come and so much life to live. And everyone is in this together, this, this season of pain and hurt and questioning. Um, and for me, what's made me feel better is knowing that I'm not alone. And then knowing that, again, God has the final say and has my back. And sometimes we need time to understand why certain things happened or just to at least heal. Um, but know that you have so much inside of yourself that can get through anything that you're powerful, you're brave. It's okay to cry. It's okay to question. It's also okay to be strong and to try to be positive and to feel the way that you want to feel. But just know that there is a plan that you will see the rising sun again, that there is hope in the midst of so much darkness. Please let that sink into your heart and hold on to that even in in your toughest days. Um, He's got you under his wings. <laughs> I don't even know. I, I don't even know. I don't have anything else to say to that. Um, we're getting to the last final moments. Thank you. That's so beautiful. Um, oh, thank you. 
it's almost like that. It's just, there, it's such a complete um, feeling when you can rest in your faith and know that this is happening for you, right? Mm-hmm. Everything is happening for you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Hold on to that for you. Yes. Um, you've done hundreds, if not thousands of interviews in your entire <laughs> career. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've done. That's actually I'm great. Like, <laughs> yeah. What, what's something that you wish that somebody would ask you that they Honest, haven't? I love everything that you're saying and just really highlighting and taking it back to my family and highlighting and, and, and acknowledging their sacrifices, how strong they are and just how amazing they are. That's like my goal, you know, and that's awesome when people can do that. Cause There's always, you know, someone's in front of the curtain, but there's so many people behind the curtain, you know, helping to, to make everything come together and to make that little person, you know, shine. Um, So that is awesome. Whenever they ask me about my family um, or even just say how awesome they are, that means more to me than words. Yes. Oh, I love them. I love them so much. I love you and I love them. So I literally love everybody about this interview and about what you said they're gonna be so happy they're gonna love it so much hey I i can't wait to come to san antonio so you guys can make me some delicious food oh girl it is on whenever you can come please let me know and you will have the best time ever literally it'll be music and the best food and so much fun and laughter and craziness. <laughs> oh my good. Allie, you are so incredible. I have one final question. Yes, girl. Um, I know that you're like, whatever you want. I keep saying this is the final. This is it. This is it. I just love her. What am I supposed to do? She's great. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I started this podcast as a way for people to uh, truly, I mean, the reason why I started practicing or practicing yoga is because I was a teenager getting into trouble with the law and I kind of went the uh, opposite way. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, Ellie was like the perfect child. Um, I mean, I know you weren't, but you know what I'm saying? I, I was like the kid, I was like the little Hispanic girl that was getting in trouble with the law and like getting arrested and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> again, LA. So I, uh, I, st- I, yoga and meditation really helped get me on the path, you know, and, and, you know, even though we were raised with a very, you know, strong family, strong faith, it was, it was just what I needed to just feel in my body and feel empowered. Right. And so I started this podcast. I mean, I started teaching yoga because I wanted to bring these practices to communities that didn't have access to it. Right. Or that felt like, oh, yoga is for rich people or, you know, kind of thing. Totally. So um, that was what spawned this whole process. And I started Radically Loved because I believe that we are radically loved by God, source, higher power, spirit, whatever it is, your higher power, that we are radically loved and radically supported. Um, So my final question to you is two parts. The first one is, how do you feel radically loved? Mm -hmm. And what or who do you radically love? Oh, man. There's so many ways I feel radically loved. But honestly, one really special way is when I'm just like at home in my quiet space, not with social media, not with anything, and just like really soaking in the quiet and reflecting and just remembering how loved I am, you know, by God and valued and how my life matters and just absorbing that, you know, even if I'm just like in my bed waking up and just kind of being quiet and just like praying and looking up, that's when I feel radically loved and I want to pass it on to others. You are radically loved. You are valued. Your life matters. You are special. Um, I hope someone can truly take that in today. Also, who do I radically love? Well, of course, my family. I mean, we all know that. But besides them, man, my fans, they 
support me and love me so much. They give me confidence. They give me security. They have my back. Um, they literally love me no matter what. I could just have like no makeup on and and I would think like, oh, I look crazy. Or, oh my gosh, my skin or my eye or whatever. And they're like, no, you're beautiful. <laughs> and just beyond that, they see me for me. They appreciate my personality, my heart, my story, the music that means mm so much to me um they make me feel radically loved and they've you know they say I touch their lives and I change their lives but they change mine I mean look where I am today I wouldn't I would not be here without them supporting me in you know fifth harmony and especially now it's beautiful and I feel like I'm at a time where I'm finally embracing who I am and it's because of my family and God and my friends but my my fans, they teach me to love myself. So oh. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so, thank you so, so much. I am so honored and privileged to have had this opportunity to have you on, to have had the privilege of, and the honor of reading your story. And um, I am a huge fan and I cannot wait to see what more you continue to create in your life because it's going to be so incredibly big. And I am just, I'm so, so grateful for you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, girl, the feeling is mutual. Thank you so much for this beautiful, impactful interview. It really just brought me so much joy. Thank you. God bless you, girl. Oh. And you Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am so excited to continue to do this. Please share this with your friends. Email us, message us on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or on Twitter at Rosie Acosta. Subscribe on iTunes, write a review. We love doing this, so please help us continue to keep this podcast going. Thanks for listening.